What's up squad, my name is ESO and welcome back to the channel where I show you guys all the unique weapons in Skyrim. And in today's daily video guide I thought I'd tell you where you can get 5 very easy to find unique weapons in Skyrim. And you can get any of these at any level. I'm also going to be giving you guys some tips on how you can use these weapons as well. But let's start off with weapon number 1. This isn't really a unique weapon as such, but it is a unique enchantment on the weapon. The enchantment itself is completely unique and you can only find it in this one location in the whole game. So you're going to need to come here on the map to the Silent Moon's camp. It's northwest from Whiterun and I highly suggest coming here very early on in the game because this enchantment is seriously amazing and I'll tell you more about it in a moment, but first let's go get it. And I highly suggest coming here very early on in the game for sure because this enchantment is seriously just amazing at a low level and at later levels as well but just mainly you're going to find it very useful early on. So when you arrive you will find quite a few bandits here. So we're just going to take them all out now. I've brought Vilkus along with me to help with them. Look at him, he's turned into a unicorn. What are you doing Vilkus you crazy bastard? I've actually recently installed a mod that adds more people, more bandits, into the locations of Skyrim. Just kind of fills them out a little bit more. Like, I do like it, but at the same time, when I'm recording videos like this, and I'm like, I just want to show you guys how to get X or Y weapon, it kind of becomes a bit more of an inconvenience than anything. <laughs> get Rex up. There we go, Vilkus. That's what I'm talking about. That's why I brought you along, man. Look at this guy. He thinks he can come up to Vilkus with a two-handed sword. Oh, he's gone down again. Oh, I can't believe he actually got killed by this orc. What a savage. I do not think so, bro. Oh, just took a fireball to the face and didn't even take any damage there. What an absolute savage. Let's get out of the ebony bow here. Just absolute wreck these guys with like 400 damage bow shots. There we go. Now he's dead. So we're actually heading up to the top of this plinth, which is a rather interesting location in itself because it is the location of the secret Lunar Forge, which is technically an unmarked location in Skyrim, but um, you can kind of guess where it is, obviously. What is this person doing, man? Please, come on. There we go. Now we've cleared out all the riffraff. Person's literally got stapled to the ground. We can go up to the Lunar Forge and explore it. So if we come on inside here, we will find that there are some weapons that have already been created at the Lunar Forge that are already pre-enchanted. So here we go, Lunar Iron War Axe. There's also a Lunar Iron Sword there, but we can also read the notes on the Lunar Forge, which is just kind of interesting really. The Lunar Forge. I've managed to get the forge itself up and running, but again, I find nothing special about its workings. These weapons were clearly forged here, yet the secret of their enchantment remains elusive. All I've been able to discern so far is some connection between the weapon's power and the appearance of the moons. The weapons themselves are crafted. The weapons themselves are crafted of what seems to be like a normal metal, but while the moons are high above, they gain an additional ability. It seems that when the sun has gone down, the lunar weapons take a vampire-like ability transferring a small amount of health from the victim to the user. That is indeed not how they work though. There is a light armor skill book, I mean a smithing skill book here if you want to read it as well, so make sure you grab that. And also check out this boss chest here for some other useful items. There's also a quite a well-known myth about this location where apparently if the forge, this forge here is in direct moonlight, you can actually craft lunar weapons while using the forge. But this is just a myth, it doesn't actually work like this. Instead, let's have a look at the enchantment here. But before you do come and get this guys, you're going to want to make sure you are level 3 or above. Because then you will get the most powerful version of the enchantment which will do an additional 20 damage. And this is absolutely monstrous considering it's one of the most powerful enchantments you can get this early in the game. And at level 3 as well, which is just ridiculous. The enchantment itself will only work at night time between the hours of 9pm and 5am. So pretty much when the moon is out. 
And then when you attack people during that time, they'll usually glow brightly as you strike them. The enchantment itself though is actually bugged. So as you can see, it sometimes won't work unless you have the unofficial patch mod installed. And you can download that now on console, so you can go ahead and fix it yourself guys. And if you're on PC, it was already available to download in the old Skyrim, so nothing's changed there. And guys, you can also go and take this weapon to an enchanting altar to actually disenchant the lunar weapon to learn its enchantment for yourself. Then we can apply it to a bow or a dagger or any weapon you really want to. And by doing this guys, you can actually enchant a weapon to do over 30 lunar damage depending on your enchanting skill level. And if you're really keen guys, you can actually go and create a fortify enchanting potion and then craft an insanely powerful weapon of the moon. And if you guys want to do this for yourself, make sure you smash that subscribe button first and then just check out the description for a full guide on how to create godly overpowered weapons. But the next unique item on this list can be found at Clearspring Tarn. It's located just here on the map, northwest from the rift, near the hot springs. And when you first arrive at this location guys, you'll probably come across some hunters butchering some innocent animals. And if you find pleasure in watching this kind of activity, you'll definitely like our next years. weapon. Make sure you get the secret chest hidden underwater in this pond though. It's usually just a low level lock. After you've got that chest, we're just going to drop down over this cliff edge here. And there's sort of a path underneath us, and that's going to lead us to an unmarked cave hidden below the pond. Once inside, you can actually see the water from the pond above that's leaking through the cave ceiling. You will also find a troll, and if you are a low level, they can be quite tricky to fight. However, you don't actually need to kill him. You can just run in and then loot the bow of the hunt, which is found on this plinth at the very back of the cave. There's also a skill book to the left and a chest to loot on the right of you as well, so make sure you grab that, guys. The bow of the hunt itself is a hunting bow, with an enchantment that does 20 points of extra damage to animals. Now when most people think of animals in Skyrim, they think about deers, rabbits and stuff like that. So the enchantment, if you're thinking about that, might not seem very good. But usually when you're wandering the wilderness of Skyrim, you'll come across animals that can kill you, like saber cats, spiders and trolls. These are usually very troublesome for low level characters because even at level 1 it will still do plus 20 points of extra damage to animals, so it really helps get you through those early levels of the game. But because the weapon is unique, you cannot disenchant it and put it on a sword or another weapon of your choosing. But if you guys want to get the enchantment for yourself, let's look at the unique weapon number 3. And for this one guys, we're going to need to go to the Halted Stream Camp. And this one's just pretty much a simple bandit camp. Apart from the bandit chief, you probably won't have too much difficulty with anybody here. There's also a hidden chest just under this wooden construct, so make sure you loot that as well. I'm not actually showing you all the loot in each one of these locations guys, I'm just sort of pointing out a few of them so you can go and pick them up on your way. But make sure you have a proper look yourself if you don't want to miss any. And guys, also make sure that you loot all the enemies you defeat in this location, because one of them will be holding the unique weapon that we're looking for. It's called the Poacher's Axe. That's the end of that. He will usually be an orc located inside the actual mine itself. So once you go inside the mine, you can kill a guard that has the key for the gate to the entrance. So once we go through this iron gate here, we'll find an orc who's usually located down next to the bandit chief. He's quite easy to kill, but if you do have any trouble, just use the fire urns to burn the oil he's standing on. The poacher's axe does an extra free damage to animals. It's pretty crappy, 
but the whole point is that you can disenchant this one and then put the enchantment on another weapon, or even make another bow that's more powerful than the bow of the hunt, because you can actually enchant your weapons to do over 30 damage to animals with it. So guys, in at number 4 we have the first unique piece of armour, and for this one we'll want to come southwest from Riften, all the way along the mountain range to the south until you find Frokai's shack. It's also south from Iverstead, but it is quite a climb to actually get up to the location. Once you are at the top though, you'll find a unique circlet atop this wooden chopping block over here. What this circlet does is reduce the magicka cost of any spells that you cast by 5%, so it's especially handy if your character uses conjuration spells or illusion spells that usually cost quite a lot of magicka. If you don't need it though, you can actually just sell it for 1200 gold. What do you reckon Vilkus? You think this circlet is pretty pretty don't you? Suits my silky locks doesn't it? Now this circlet won't actually be here if you have the unofficial patch installed on your console or PC. So make sure you uninstall it before you come to this location so you can actually go and get it. And while we are here guys, you should also go and talk to Frokai himself and he can be found in this shack here. He has a quest to give you for another unique necklace and I've got a guide for that quest and I'll link it down below in the description if you are interested in doing it. It's quite a cool quest actually, you have to go around killing spectral animals. Alternatively though guys, you can just kill him and get the Fortify Archery Enchanted Ring, which makes your bows do another 15% more damage. You can also then go and disenchant this ring to learn the Fortify Archery Enchantment. He also has Kind's Token, which will make your bows do another 5% damage and also reduce the damage you take from any animals like saber cats or spiders and so on. But I still suggest just doing that quest anyway instead of just killing him for it, because otherwise you'll leave this child fatherless. And now for the sixth and final unique weapon we're going to be getting. In this easy to find unique weapons list, we will want to head over to Journeyman's Nook and that's located east from the College of Winterhold, just here on the map guys. The location itself is pretty well hidden in the snowdrift, but it shouldn't be too hard to find for you because it's marked on your map after all. Now there's just one single bandit archer at this location, but we have Vilkus with us and he's going to absolutely wreck him. And if you're wondering guys, Vilkus is using the giant's club a unique weapon that only followers can use. So if you want to get that for your follower because it is very powerful, make sure you check out the link in the description below on how to do it. But once you've killed the bandit, you're going to find a dead mage just here on the floor, Bavir. And Bavir has Bavir's dagger next to his corpse. It's an elven dagger and this is one of the only fixed locations in the game that you can come very early on and get an elven dagger for yourself. If you're level 1 for example you can just take the carriage from Whiterun to Winterhold and then just walk over to this location. And there you have it, you have an elven dagger. And guys if you have not already please make sure you smash that subscribe button for tons more daily Skyrim videos. And you can also follow me on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter if you don't want to miss a guide. Because I always post each video on there too. But thanks again for watching, me ESO and I will see you, loyal subscriber, in the next daily Skyrim guide. So have a fantastic day and goodbye. I will see you in the next one. Don't forget that you can receive text and or email notifications from my channel every time I release a new video. Underneath the video just hit subscribe and then hit the bell next to it. You will now get notified as soon as I release a new video. Welcome to the ESO squad guys.